Next, let's talk about identity development and how our sense of identity and our sense of who we are develops over our lifetimes. People have multiple identities that intersect with one another, and the development of these identities is going to be slightly different based on whether it's a non-dominant identity or a dominant one. Let's talk first about non-dominant identity development. Non-dominant identity development happens in four stages. First, we have unexamined identity. Unexamined identity is when the individual lacks an awareness of or lacks interest in their own identity. So this generally happens when we are very small, when we're young, and we don't yet understand what our identity is and we're not aware of our identity. We haven't looked at it yet. Next comes conformity. This happens when an individual internalizes and adopts the values and norms of the dominant group so that they are not perceived as being different from the dominant group. The individual might change their appearance, they might change their mannerisms, the way that they talk, they might even change their name in order to conform within the dominant society. And then comes resistance and separation. This happens when an individual shifts away from conformity and starts engaging in actions that challenge the dominant identity group. For example, they might choose to interact only with those who share their non-dominant identity. So at this point, they are starting to really explore that non-dominant identity and really lean on it rather than trying to conform with the dominant identity. And finally, hopefully, we reach integration. This is when an individual achieves a balance between embracing their own identities and valuing other dominant and non-dominant identities. Oftentimes, when people reach integration, they work to end discrimination for their own group and sometimes for other groups as well. Next, let's talk about dominant identity development. Dominant identity development happens in five stages. First, like with non-dominant identity development, we have the unexamined identity. This happens when an individual doesn't think about their own identity or the identity of others. In most cases, they might not even realize that there is a hierarchy that treats some people differently than others. And additionally, they might not think that any hierarchy that does exist applies to them. They don't even realize that they are a part of this equation. And some people might stay in this phase of unexamined identity for a long time. In some cases, for their entire lives. If we move out of unexamined identity, however, people can move into acceptance. This is when an individual passively or actively accepts that some people are treated differently than others, but they don't do anything to address that fact. If the individual reaches passive acceptance, this means that they acknowledge that the difference exists, but they don't see their privilege or the institutional perpetuation of various different isms like racism, sexism. They don't see these things as existing just yet. They only acknowledge that a difference exists. If the person reaches active acceptance, on the other hand, this happens when an individual acknowledges the inequality and they are proud to be a member of the superior group. So take that for what you will. Next, we reach resistance. Resistance happens when an individual acknowledges the unearned advantages that they are given by their membership as a dominant identity, and they sometimes feel guilt or shame about those unearned advantages. As a result, they may begin to dissociate from their own dominant identity group. And next, we reach redefinition. Redefinition happens when an individual revises the negative views of their identity and begins to acknowledge the privilege that they might have. And in a lot of cases, when they reach redefinition, 
they try to use that power that they are granted to work for social justice. And finally, that brings us to integration. This happens when people integrate their dominant identity into all aspects of their lives. And they try to find opportunities to educate others about privilege while also being a responsive ally to people in non-dominant identity groups. So they are really working to acknowledge their own privilege and hopefully using that privilege to be an ally to people who don't have that kind of privilege. So as we can see, our identities develop over the course of our lifetimes. And these don't happen in any set kind of way. We aren't automatically going to progress through this identity development. Like I said earlier, we might get stuck at any point along the way. Um, but this is how we develop that sense of who we are within these non-dominant and dominant identity groups.